Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and back there is Julie Oliver and she's a very cute dog. Over the last week or so, I've been seeing claims on social media that the COVID vaccine causes AIDS. Initially, I thought surely no one really believes this, but then I started seeing more and more posts about it and realised that some people really do believe it. So in this video, we'll be looking at the various origins of the claims and how they demonstrate our disturbing lack of comprehension skills in those making them. But first, let's go back to the science and look at what actually causes AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. It's also called Advanced HIV Infection or Late Stage HIV. And that's because AIDS is caused by infection with the virus known as HIV, which stands for human immunodeficiency virus. As with all viruses, HIV needs to invade cells to replicate. The cells it targets are CD4 T cells, which are also known as helper T cells. These cells, which are part of the adaptive immune system, are a type of white blood cell that usually coordinates our body's immune response. The virus takes over these cells and uses them to make copies of itself. Over time, HIV kills more and more of these CD4 cells, which weakens the body's immune system and its ability to recognise and fight infections. When the level of CD4 cells falls below 200 per cubic millimetre of blood, the body becomes unable to fight off serious opportunistic infections like pneumonia and tuberculosis. And it also becomes more susceptible to certain cancers. There's no cure for an HIV infection, but the good news is that antiretroviral treatment stops the virus from replicating and damaging the immune system. A person living with HIV who's on effective treatment can live a long and healthy life and never progress to AIDS. So given we know that AIDS is a result of an untreated HIV infection, why would anyone think a vaccine would cause it? Let's have a look. So the first lot of tweets are along the lines of this one. BBC admits they used HIV to make the vaccine and now they all have AIDS. And of course, the new COVID pills are really HIV medication. This tweet is accompanied by a video clip, which certainly appears to be from the BBC. And it is describing a potential COVID vaccine that was under development in Australia. And the vaccine did indeed use a small section of the HIV virus. But it wasn't the whole virus and therefore couldn't have caused AIDS. The thing is, though, the vaccine was discontinued because the phase one trial showed that in some people it was causing false positives in certain HIV antibody tests. And they know they were false positives because they did further tests to confirm that the people didn't have HIV infections or any other changes associated with HIV infection. Now, it would have been possible to just develop a different HIV antibody test to solve the problem. But obviously, you're not going to do that when there were already other alternatives that didn't have the problem. So the thousands of people sharing this tweet think they have found a video about the vaccines that are currently being used when they are actually sharing a video about a vaccine that never made it past phase one trials. The next lot of tweets are variations on this one, which says, according to this article, we can get hashtag HIV from the shot. Now, the linked article is a legitimate article, which was published in Science in October 2020. And it was describing a potential issue with some of the vaccines in development at the time. But needless to say, it didn't say we could get HIV from the vaccine. The article was describing an issue which was uncovered during trials of potential vaccines for HIV. And it is described in greater detail in this paper here, whose first author is none other than Anthony Fauci. The paper describes a trial of a potential HIV vaccine based on an ad 5 vector, where people who got the vaccine were more likely to become infected with HIV than those who got the placebo. Now, the vaccine wasn't giving them HIV, it was increasing their risk of contracting it if they were exposed. 
And in the trial, those most at risk were uncircumcised men who already had high AD5 antibody levels prior to the trial. Of course, this still isn't a good thing. You don't really want a COVID vaccine that will make you more susceptible to an HIV infection, even if you are unlikely to come into contact with HIV. However, this isn't actually an issue with the vaccines that have been approved in Western countries because none of them actually use AD5 vectors. So anti-vaxxers sharing this information are trying to scare people based on an article about a type of vaccine that most people wouldn't even have had. Now, there are two vaccines that do use AD5 vectors. One is the Russian Sputnik vaccine and the other is the Chinese CanSino vaccine. Whilst it's possible that these vaccines could increase your risk of HIV infection, it's also unlikely because there was a trial of an Ebola vaccine using the AD5 vector in Sierra Leone and no increase in HIV infection was seen in this trial. And Sierra Leone is a country with a high prevalence of HIV infection. So again, anti-vaxxers are bringing up irrelevant information in an attempt to scare people. Another common theme in tweets doing the rounds concerns reports of a more virulent HIV strain reported in the Netherlands. And I'll just read out one of them. I may have accidentally mentioned the whole HIV thing in front of a bunch of jabbed up work colleagues tonight. One of them proceeded to Google it and quickly found the new HIV variant article. Now, I think they may have meant proceeded to Google it as opposed to preceded to Google it. But anyway, let's continue. He seemed a little subdued for the rest of the shift. Am I a bad person? Hmm. Now, the person who wrote this tweet seems to be implying that her jabbed colleague was subdued because they just realised that a new HIV strain was associated with the COVID vaccine. I think it's more likely they were subdued because they realised they were working with a total nutcase. So the various news articles about the highly virulent variant of HIV circulating in the Netherlands actually started with this peer-reviewed paper, which has just been published in the journal Science. It describes a variant that is both more transmissible and more virulent, which means people infected with the variant are at risk of developing AIDS much more rapidly than with other variants of HIV. Compared with people infected with other HIV variants, those infected with the new variant had up to 5.5 times more virus in their blood and their CD4 T cells dwindled nearly twice as fast. The good news is, though, that it still responds to existing treatments. Now, it appears that the anti-vaxxers didn't get much beyond the headlines and assumed that because this article had just been published, it must be a brand new strain of HIV. However, if you take the time to read the article, you will find that it is about a variant that has been spreading for the past decade and is believed to have arisen in the 1990s. So clearly this is not remotely related to the COVID vaccine. Incidentally, this variant is yet another example that viruses don't necessarily mutate to become less virulent, which, as we previously discussed, is a misconception that a lot of people have about viruses that is leading some people to believe that SARS-CoV-2 will keep mutating to become less virulent. Then there are tweets like this one. It's AIDS. They are giving people AIDS. I am on an international Zoom call with pathologists and doctors. We are in serious trouble. Immune systems are being obliterated. Now, I must say this one has left me a bit perplexed because she hasn't even attempted to provide any evidence to support her claim. You'd think if her claim was true, she would have some data showing that people who have been vaccinated are more likely to have had bad outcomes from infections than unvaccinated people. Of course, we know the opposite is true. This particular chart is from the UK, but we see the same thing around the world. And I've shown similar charts from other countries in previous videos. It is looking at critical care admissions for COVID by vaccination status. 
And critical care is another name for intensive care. So this chart is looking at a number of people with COVID who required admission to the ICU. And it's standardised to the rate per 100,000 people. And as you can see, the lowest rates were amongst those who had been vaccinated and boosted. And the highest rates were amongst those who were unvaccinated. Clearly, the immune systems of those who have been vaccinated are faring much better than those of the unvaccinated, which is the exact opposite of what we would see if vaccination was actually causing AIDS. So in summary, the various claims being made by anti-vaxxers regarding COVID vaccines demonstrate that they are lacking basic comprehension skills, something which was the case long before COVID. If you'd like to look further into the data that I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. Thank you for listening. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button so that more people will see it. And if you'd like to see more videos about the science in the future, please hit the subscribe button.